Okay, I'm back everyone. So good day everyone. I'm glad to have all of you here to discuss one of the most important basic education reform measures we have ever undertaken as a country. So since you're watching right here, meaning to say hindi natalo yung ating virtual uh, class or live online class this afternoon. But anyway, sige, okay lang yan. So again, for today's video, I will be discussing with all of you the key features and details of the K-12 curriculum or the enhanced basic education curriculum. By the way, before we all start, um, last uh, November 29th, so I already asked you to perform the particular task. So you are given a task last November 29 to December 6 or last Sunday to search on the important uh, information about K-12 curriculum. So I know that as of this moment, you have now already uh, prior knowledge and understanding regarding the K-12 curriculum. Now let's start. So hopefully this will give you, of course, a better understanding of the program and um, how can we collectively make basic education better for the Filipino learners. Of course, we are a future educators, so congratulations in advance, our dear Ernie Unit students. Now let's have the next slide. Okay, so let's start with the framework of the K-12 basic education curriculum. Okay, now, if you can see on the screen, K-12 curriculum built on previous reform initiatives. So before the implementation of the K-12 curriculum, our Department of Education here in the Philippines are continuously renovating or innovating um, our curriculum, of course, for the development of our learners. So we have here at COM report of 1991, the BESRA, UNESCO, we have four pillars of education. We have the main legal basis, the Republic Act number 10533, or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. Then we also have Republic Act of 10157, the Kindergarten Education Act, Nature and Needs of the Learner, Learner-Centered Curriculum, of course, and the Needs of the National and Global Community. Of course, if you can see here, curriculum is very contextualized. And one of the aims of this K-12 curriculum implementation is to address the national and global needs. Strategy to reduce poverty, of course, and consistent with the ASEAN 2015. And of course, it is um, a way to um, enhance and to develop the learners or Filipino learners in general. Okay, next slide. So if you can see on the slide again, it is stated here, holistically develop Filipino with 21st century skills. So what are um, the skills that needs to be developed and what are the learning areas that we should focus on in the K-12 curriculum? So of course we have here the skills, okay, then the strong, curriculum support system, and how to monitor and evaluate the system. Okay, next. Okay, now, curriculum not reinvented because, again, um, curriculum or K-10 to curriculum is spiral. So that's K-12, to kinder to grade 10, okay? And while for the senior high school curriculum, uh, we have two years, we have grade 11 and grade 12, so that is disciplinal. Of course, it is also based on the learner's um, skills and expertise, okay? So education, of course, is everybody's business. Okay, so if you can see, you have here the context, 
then the curriculum support system, societal support, administrative, instructional support, family support, of course. And that means a holistic development for Filipino learners or of all the Filipino learners, okay? Now, so there are four exits, okay? In the K-12 curriculum, there are four exits. First, we have higher education, and of course, employment, and then entrepreneurship, and the middle level skills development. And take note that in every grade level for the K-12 curriculum, we are also developing 21st century skills. We are also immersed in different activities, different learning strategies, wherein we can also develop our skills in the information, media, technology skills, learning, and innovation skills. Okay, We do also have communication skills, life and career skills, Okay. And this is also a reminder for us teachers and for future educators that a strong career guidance and advocacy programs for students advising. Okay, so we are going to um, assist our students. Okay, on what uh, particular um, programs that they would like to um, get into. Okay, next. Okay, now here is the chart for the Philippine Qualification Framework. Of course, we have level one, and that is at the end of the grade 10. Okay, at the end of your 10th, uh, seven years, but seven years. Okay, so we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, at the end of grade 10, and then level two at the end of grade 12. Okay. So, take note, or if you can still remember our previous lessons, I think that was during first or second grading period, that in our DepEd educational system, we have the levels of education. So, if you can see here on our screen, we have first level, we have the basic education. Then we have technical, educational, and skill development. And of course, it was, of course, assisted by TESDA. And the last level is the higher education. Okay, so that's it. Okay, if you can see here, this is the chart of the proposed DepEd articulation of the PQF, okay, level one and two. So, of course, since we are following um, a taxonomy of the development of knowledge, skills, and values. So that's why it is our main goal that every lesson that we are going to um, to deliver to our learners at, uh, with, within the duration or at the end of the lesson, we will focus on the development of our learners' knowledge, cognitive skills, psychomotor skills, and effective. Now, this one in the other, in this area, we have the level, these are the grade levels, so level one, of course, at the end of grade 10, and level two at the end of grade 12. So, yun. Wait, sorry for the interruption. I have, yun, nasa labas. By the way, balik tayo dito, hope you can focus on the screen. Yan. So at the end of the level one, after grade 10, the students, of course, yon, will, process, will possess functional knowledge across learning areas, okay? And then these are the application and the degree of independence. Okay, next. Yon. This one is the curriculum outcome. So the key stage outcomes translated into first content standards and performance standards. Then we have learning competencies and learning resources. Okay. So you know, this is for grade three, grade six, grade 10, and grade 12. So for the learning areas and grade level, these are the learning resources. Of course, we do also have the teacher's guide and the learner's materials or learner's manuals or modules. Then that is also based on the learning competencies. 
and of course the content and performance standards. Next, so what do you mean by learning standards in our K-12 curriculum? So learning standards refer to how well the students must perform and what kinds of tasks based on what content to be considered proficient or effective. So we have, um, of course, um, prepared criteria, rubrics, and other grading, compo grading components in order for um, the teachers to assess okay, the students' um, output and performance. And then what another definition of learning standards is they define what learning should be achieved and what grades or over certain grade stands. Okay. So these are the different learning standards and competencies. First, we have key stage standards. Second, we have content standards. Third, we have performance standards. And the fourth is the learning competency. So please take note of these four different learning standards and competencies. Okay, this is the sample key stage standard, the mother tongue kinder to grade three. So take note that um, a child can be admitted, of course, to grade one when he or she um, will reach the age of seven. So, yon. So, before that, of course, kailangan mag kinder. So, for the sample key stage standard given here, so a mother tongue kinder to grade three students. So, by the end of the grade three, students will enjoy communicating in their first language on familiar topics for a variety of purposes and audiences using basic vocabulary and phrases okay so yon so creating stories um reading text of course with understanding okay so that's it it's the key stage standards of mother tongue now example Another example is for science grade 9. So I can relate to this one because I am a grade 9 science teacher also. So we have here the content. By the way, for the grade 9, our first grading period will cover biology. So if you can see here, grade 9. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm back with I'm back with the recording. I'm sorry for the interruption. It's too noisy outside. Okay, now if you can see here. We have here the content. It's raining outside. Content standards, performance standards, and learning competencies. So in every topic that we are going to discuss to our learners, before that, before writing a lesson plan, we should always understand and we should also identify first what are the content standards of that particular content, what are the performance standards that we um, should, of course, what are the performance tasks or output that we expect on the students and what is or what are the learning competencies of that particular content. So this is the example for science grade 9, first grading period. Okay, next. Okay. So focusing on here, content standards, the learners demonstrate an understanding of how the different structures of the circulatory and respiratory systems work together to transport oxygen-rich blood and nutrients to the different parts of the body. And that is the performance standards. So, of course, so while we are having this um, content, respiratory and circulatory system, so we science teachers should... Um, make sure that we will achieve this performance standard that the learner shall be able to conduct an information dissemination activity on effective ways of taking care of the respiratory and circulatory system based on the data gathered from the school or local health workers okay next and the learning competencies of this contents the learners explain how the respiratory and circulatory system work together to transport nutrients, gases, and other molecules to and from the different parts of the body. Okay. 
Okay, now, so we are done with the example content with content standards, with learning competencies and performance standards. So this one, let's discuss the features and details of the K-12 basic education program. And again, these are uh, some of the questions last November 29, you already, um, I know you already answered those one because some of you submitted already the questions or the answers, okay? By the way, sorry for again the interruption. It's raining outside. Okay. Yeah. So this is the basic education program. For elementary, we have kinder to grade six. So for junior high school, we have grade seven to eight and grade nine to ten. Now if you can see here. The exploratory TLE is because from grade 7 to 8, they are free to explore any um, competencies for the TLE. I, can, I know you can hear me. Sorry, it's very interrupting. Okay, I'm back with the recording. So, medyo mahina na siya. I closed the window as in very lock. Lock pa din ang lock. Okay, now let's go continue. So, for the 21st century skills, of course, for our K-12 curriculum. So, skills embedded in the curriculum. And there are also skills developed bit by bit to the learning competencies and performance standards. So above is our example. Okay. So we have here for the information, media, and technology skills, we have learning and innovation skills, we have communication skills, and we have life and career skills. And now, this is the example of how curricular areas this is for grade 7, that can lead to 21st century skills. So make all the skills and competencies connect at the level of the classroom. So that's the goal and it's a challenge for us teachers in a K-12 curriculum. Okay, this is an example. Okay, next. So mother tongue based multilingual education. So we have the acronym MTB MLE. Again, this is only for grade three. Okay, kinder to grade three. Take note that when we say mother tongue, it is a child's dominant language. So for Tagum City, of course, Bisaya. Diba pedyo lalung na ng mga Bisaya no words. So field must be able to determine the real language of the child. Not the ideal language, okay? So not the same as bilingual education. So during kinder to three, the child is taught in his or her dominant language. So learners' materials written in 19 languages currently. So children retain their um, ethnicity or ethnic identity, culture, heritage, and values. So the example for that is Madrasa in Alive. Okay? So here. So if you can see here in Kinder 2 or 3, you know, um, mother tongue. When they reach grade 3, so Filipino and English language proficiency is developed. Okay? Then mother tongue is used in instruction and learning materials of other learning areas. Of course, this only for emphasis. Yeah, dali na siya masabtan sa mga learners. Okay? Yeah, that's it. Next. So, this is the bridging framework of our mother tongue. Okay? For mother tongue, literate in level 1. Then, Filipino, that's level 1 and 2. 
And English is the multiliterate literate Filipino learner. So that would be, ano na, grade 3 na siya. So from grade, kinder 1 to grade 3, so kailangan siyang maging, of course, um, acquainted with the mother tongue. Yun. Okay, next. Contextualization and localization it is actually stipulated in RA10533 and its implementing rules and regulation. So the curriculum shall be contextualized, but at the same time should be global. Okay, The curriculum shall be flexible enough to enable and allow schools to localize, indigenize, and enhance the curriculum based on their respective educational and social context. Okay, now here, this is actually one of the best, okay, shall we say assets of case whole curriculum, the spiraling of content and competencies. So basic, and that is for complex, not the other way around, okay, and then you have to reiterate or iterate the content over time and then spiral across discipline or other discipline or other learning discipline okay, or areas. So the spiraling of content, of course, this also allows the learners to learn topics and skills for the development of their cognitive stage. Okay. So, yun, ito yung spiraling of content, every subject area. Okay, so next. Now, there are five common competencies in grade 7 to 8. And hopefully, they will find their inclinations and will have decided by grade 9 if they will go for the academic track. So, take note, teachers, especially for grade 7 and 8 teachers, that we are going to assist and help our learners for them to be able to find their um their ano, ano dito? expertise um what particular skills they are good at okay so yon so you have here exploratory at grades seven and eight and they have the opportunity to explore from a maximum of four tle mini courses so we have uh, cooking, we have tailoring, we have agriculture, we have fishery, we have also computer programming, electricity, so and many other courses. So because of that, seven and eight stages, at least by grade nine, meron na silang specific na course, doon na sila mapapapos. Kung baga, yun na talaga yung major nila from grade 9 to 10, and this is also one of the preparation for themselves on what particular track that um, they are going to enroll for the senior high school, okay? Now, we have here ensuring higher education and textbook readiness. So next, we discuss what are the key considerations in ensuring that the curriculum adequately prepares learners for higher education and technical vocational training. So, attention. Okay. It'll run through na lang natin siya. Yan. It's more on the subject areas. Okay. Open for grade 7 and 10. Then for the senior high school. And to check. This is for college na. So working with SHED, why we have to, of course, the implementation of K-12 curriculum has been a partner in the development of uh, the K-12 curriculum. So again, SHED, rather, SHED has been a partner in the development of the senior high school curriculum. And then, of course, the Pwede ang TESTA. Because TESTA has always been included in all writing activities. Okay. And then, come on, TVAT competencies in grade 7 to 10 and 11 to 12. So, these are the um, common competencies 
okay, embedded in the CLE and technical vocational livelihood curriculum for grade 7 to 12. So if you can um, reflect on this, our Department of Education is, of course, trying to develop one's um, abilities and skills, okay, to become lifelong learners and, you know, globally competitive. So, yon. so now let's talk about how the curriculum was developed. Now, if you're asking who helped make the curriculum guide, so there are people, of course, involved in making the curriculum guide. Okay. So if you can see here, you have here the Bureau of the Focal Person, the Field Person. Okay. We have the internal and external reviewers. The CHED technical panel members or the test the crafters, they are, they are working hand in hand. And of course, the encoder. So thank God for this persons behind the curriculum guide. Okay, now this are the list of the cooperating schools and universities in the Philippines. So starting from Ateneo de Manila High School down to Xavier University. Okay, so yan, ang dami nila. So of course, it's one goal, okay, one nation, one goal for the K-12 curriculum and for the learners, of course. So yan, ito isa-isa, ang dami nila. So there are no universities in the Philippines. Okay, now, the curriculum guide process. So actually, this is just, I run through na lang natin what happened during the crafting of the curriculum guide. But we will not include this on our examination this coming final. So, masyad na siyang mataas. But then again, as an education or curriculum development student, and as a future educator, you should have this orientation. Okay? So, these are the process. For the draft one, this is created by technical panel, technical committee, drafting committee. Okay? And then, lalagyan na ng mga comments. Of course, it will be reviewed by internal and external uh, reviewers. For the draft number two, so of course, they will revise the review draft, yung mga edited or yung mga needed revision. Then final and curriculum guide, of course, the depth ed will read the comment in the curriculum finalization workshop. And then they're done. Okay. Then after the content and skills review, the curriculum guide now goes through a language review. So may mga stages, number one, number two, and number three, of course, for the final touches, the curriculum guide goes through copy and proofreading. Language editors must have knowledge of the content, of course. Okay. And then that's it. So for the coding system, Coding of learning competence of the curriculum guide per learning area. Now, if you notice or if you happen to scan a particular curriculum guide for our deaf ed or like senior high school or for junior high school, you can see there the coding like um, with the letters, with the page number or the initials of what particular subject. So, you know, coding system. So, that's it. Okay, so the coding legend example, this one, of course, it consists of the letters, the numbers, or even the pages. Okay, so meron din niyang particular um, explanation. Okay, so it will be, of course, found in every curriculum guide. It explains how to, of course, to encode. Yeah. The next Harvesting of the depth and learning area, so yun nga, with proper coordination and working hand in hand, so that is, we have now our curriculum guide. So sample curriculum guide, yun na, may content, content standards, performance standards, learning competence, and the code, yun na. So this is, for example, science, this is science, letter S, science, 3, and that is for grade 3. Then M, I think MT is for the initial for matter. And then that's it. So, yun. Then LM or the learning materials. Learning guide. Yun. May mga other references. They also included here. And then here. Dito tayo. 
Yeah, great to the map for the help. Mm -hmm. And then for future educators like you, you can also download freely our curriculum guides at bit.ly slash k-12 curriculum. And you have to refer to curriculum guides to aid uh, your decision making in programs and specialization. Okay, that's it. So, again, we will also discuss the senior high school curriculum. So, there are eight learning areas in the core curriculum. So, we have four tracks. So, hopefully, as of this moment, you know now already what are the four different four. Uh, what are the different four? What are the four tracks of senior high school? Now, the eight learning areas muna tayo. So, we have the language, humanities, communication, mathematics, philosophy, science, social science, and physical education and health. By the way, a hint, this will be uh, one of the questions that um, I prepared for the final exam. Okay? And this is also the four senior high school tracks. We have academic track, technical vocational livelihood track, sports track, and we have this arts. Okay, next. 31 subjects with 80 hours per subject, and that is 2,480 hours for all 31 15 core subjects. Again, this is for the senior high school. So there are 16 track subjects, have two categories, seven contextualized and nine special subjects. Okay. And core, in this core and contextualized subjects are connected with the new um, curriculum of CHED. Okay. So again, next. <clears throat> so we have here subjects. We have core subjects. Okay, when we say core subjects, we have same content and same competencies for all. Okay, then we have contextualized subjects in the tracks. So again, there are four tracks. So different content, yes, but same competencies. Then we also have specialization subjects. These are the different content, but different competencies. And again, this is based on a specific track, okay? That is for the um, subjects. Yeah. This is actually the localization of a core subjects that can be done in the regions by the regions. So in the STEM mm -hmm. strand, their science different from other tracks and strands, of course, okay? But for the physical education and health, only subjects spread across four semesters. So, you know, so if you can see here on the screen, you have hours per semester, the core learning areas and subjects, and these are the eight subjects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's it for the senior high school. <clears throat> okay, now for the contextual lies, we have research, Okay, this is quality. And for day life too, that is quantitative. Okay, so you, know, mga, you have to give students enough time to decide what they really wanted to do. Okay. Yeah. So we have also the ABM. ABM is formally called BAM. Change to ABM so as to not sound like bum or drop out. So to sound like more interesting. So ABM. Ninth specialized subject is always a work immersion. Okay, so this is trend nine. Work immersion, then research, or they would have this career advocacy program or culminating activity. So you need for the ABM. Okay, next. So for the core science for STEM strand, it's different from the other tracks and strands. Okay, so ito yun siya. So iba -iba. That's for STEM. This one for the engineering requires calculus-based physics. So if you have students in the future 
who wish who wish to pursue technically related field in math and sciences, um, engineering, computer science, etc. So this is their specialized subject. And of course, they will end up on work immersion research, career advocacy, etc. And then we have also here humanities and social sciences strand. So for humanities subject plus uh, for social science subject, this is again in relation to RA10533 that provides a window of five years so that one can get graduates of Specialized courses to teach in basic education. Pwede siya maging teacher, pwede rin. The next, we have here the proposed general academic strand. Um, this is one of the useful strand, I think. So most useful for those who are still exploring possibilities for the future. And then the good incubation for both the school and the student. Yung parang hindi pa nila alam kung pwede, but they, have, but they are open for possibilities. So the electives may be electives for the TBL or for academic, uh, ABM, or UMS. All these strands come from existing strands. So that is the specialized subjects. Okay. Next. This one for the sports naman, we have sports track. So it's focus more on sports science rather than the sport. Because the span of an athlete's career is not uh, like too long. So the leadership and management are included here. Mm -hmm. You can see. Then you have the human movement for track number two or biomechanics for short. Then we also have the track number seven, if you can see here, fitness testing and exercise programming. It is also marketable in the spa and wellness industries. So kung mag enroll sila nito, tapos meron sila nito, of course, they are, they are now equipped with the knowledge, the skills, and the values to become one. Then um, grow up programs. So yun, mga work immersions and everything. Still, it will have 80 hours per semester. Next. This one, I think, it's for the arts and design. So, of course, it will be focusing more on arts and design related career opportunities mm -hmm. rather than just the artists. So, it is understanding of arts industry vital for those in the mm -hmm. arts field. This will teach them how to market themselves and earn um, using talents and skills. Okay, so of course, the track that has to be in a form where the instrument and the skills is taught. So parang working with artists, mm -hmm. artists in the communities. So because you can see here, creative industries, performing arts, puro mga arts, puro mga arts. So yeah. Sana all mali sa arts. Okay, by the way, Ito naman, the exit to NC2 qualifications of TESDA. And also, it is aligned with training regulations. Yan. Then, how TVL can lead to decent jobs in the different fields. This is for the curriculum map for agri-fishery arts. Okay. So, yung mahilig sa mga agriculture, yun fishery or whatever, crop production, eto siya. So, exploratory, sa grade 9, focus ka na dun sa crop production. May mga schools na nag, uh, na nag o offer ng ganun, depending on its location. Kung sa city ka, parang wala masyado nito. Pero kung dun ka sa mga barangays na may mga fish pond, may mga um, yun, pwedeng gumawa ng mga fish pond or agriculture particular um, program sa pwede yun siya. Okay, that's it. Then for home economics, yan. Yan. ICT, industrial arts, ito na lang, na lang natin. Okay. Curriculum guide for 
electronic servicing in C2. So, of course, if you can see, always we have the content, content standard, performance, learning competencies in the code. And sample curriculum at all for the oral communication. Now, for the requirements, of course, the senior high school program requirements is the quality standards for teachers. Of course, materials, facilities, and equipment, ICT environment, you have the assist assessment, school leadership and management, school divisions, technical assistance, community industry relevance, and partnership. Okay. So this is for the sample uh, program for the ABM teachers, of course. Um, for the senior high school teachers, pwede na kayo mag-apply without any education units, but you are also encouraged and required, maybe, siguro mga after a year. So the full-time teachers handling the course in the ABM stand must have a degree in education with units in an area. Okay. A professional teacher license. Pero pwede na siya. Ito siya. These are really the requirements. Pero at least one year, if you have a corresponding units of related course, so you still have the chance to enroll in an education course. Okay. Para tuloy tuloy. Okay. Because of the requirements. Next. So the school will identify from the community well-known persons or experts in the field of ABM who can serve as curriculum resource person consultants. This is now based on um, the partnership of the community okay, and the school. Next. Okay, this one. Ayan, secondary schools and population. Na siya. Other place ito. Eh. Ayan siya. Never mind, kasi kinuha ko lang sa internet. So, yun. So, excuse me. Now that we have understood the context, the development process, the features of the K-12 curriculum, we should be better equipped in making informed decisions and improving our learning outcomes. And then, of course, they note that the best curricula is contextualized by those implementing it. And this is a challenge for us future educators. So, what has been what is what has been presented is the intended curriculum so it is now up to us teachers future educators to ensure that this enhanced curriculum truly transforms our schools and communities okay so of course with the best of our abilities with proper you know proper education and let's do all that we can for the filipino learners and for us all teachers and educators so i think that would be all for today and hope um uh you learn you you've learned something about our discussion for today mahaba siya, i know but i hope you are you know you have um you are patient enough to to listen and to explore and to discover more about k-12 curriculum and that's it for today. So for our Education 10 uh, students, thank you for listening and have a great day. Bye.